morning. Today's job we're going to change the master cylinder and brake booster on this sort of 200 TDI Garnery Type 110. Um, when we took it out for a run, a test run for this engine, uh, there was hardly any brakes at all and the servo is not working, it's, it's not holding vacuum or it's leaking. Um, quite a straightforward job. I've got the one here. Now I did get an aftermarket master cylinder because we were trying to keep the price down but the only uh, servos we could get were uh, TRW ones. Um, yeah like they, they, were, they were a bit pricey but what else can you do? But they are made of incredibly thin metal. Anyway, it says Lucas on there, so there's a sign of confidence. Really easy to do. Four bolts and a pin through the back. I'll take the camera off the stand and I'll show you how it goes on. But the most important thing is, I put the master cylinder on the booster first, just to be 100% sure that the, the pin in here is in line with the pin in here. It, you can so easily put it offline and then you've got no brakes and you can damage the uh, master which I'll show you when I take off. Also another thing to note when you buy these cylinders these these bits here, these uh, servos, sorry it doesn't come with a vacuum adapter so if yours is broke like it has on here they're only a couple of quid but you might as well pick one up. I, in fact I bought three because they're always snapping off for some reason um, and then you're ready to go so let me take the camera off and let me show you what we're going to take off uh, just one word of note whenever you're messing about with master cylinders and plugs you know putting them on the car take the plugs out last you know put this on then take the plugs out before putting your pipes in you know you you can take the plugs off get distracted things like this dust flying around dirt no just leave it till the last minute so let's take the camera off and let's have a look what we need to disconnect. So this is quite easy to get off. There's four nuts on the back of here, three pipes on the on the uh, cylinder, and just inside there, there's a clevis pin, and there's a split pin on here. Uh, when I put this back in, I'll put the split pin. I'll, I'll do them the other way around because the pin's a bit difficult to get at on this side. But these covers here are usually missing. These little plastic covers. Um, and that's why sometimes it gets drafty in winter because all the air is blowing up through the front and it blows down here. So we're going to do it properly. Uh, if you can see this master cylinder here, you see how cracked the plastic is? That shouldn't have passed inspection because that's a potential fail. See, it's all sort of starting to get cracks around here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to lose that. But like I say, the new one comes with a cap and everything, so it's not too bad. Uh, so let's get on with that and let's see how long it takes us. Can't find my damn sockets today, I don't know where they've gone. I think Ludie's put them somewhere. Anyway, we'll find them. It's never easy, is it? <laughs> this has obviously been out before. Look at the state of the pin that came out. You know, look at it. <laughs> also, the servo only had three bolts holding it on instead of four. Nothing unusual there. But, I think we found the reason why it wasn't keeping vacuum. One of the, one of the captive uh, studs that goes in the back is all turning. Now that is going to be a bugger of a job to get out. We're going to have to cut the nut off somehow. And of course, it's not the top one, which would be easy to get at. It's the bottom one. So, I think I'll have to resort to some air tools. I knew it would be difficult. <laughs> I got my sort of little mini air die grinder cut-off type wheel. Now, of course, I can't get it in. So I'm going to have to resort to the old good old-fashioned method of brutality and shear off the nut. Split the nut off by cutting it here, turning it 180 degrees and then cutting it here and sh splitting it off. Joy's the motor in, eh? <laughs> so with a bit of brutality uh, I actually didn't shear off the nut, chisel off the nut completely but just by hitting it like that it expanded the nut just enough so I could pinch it with a pair of pliers and then sort of turn it off with a spanner so that wasn't too bad besides that damn thing was bouncing all over the place so let's see if we can get this off I've got brake fluid everywhere at the moment but I'm doing it outside so it's not too bad 
get these pipes out and put them really into this stuff here. Right. Now, I'm not supposed to put a washer on you this time. Hammer. Now it's out. So now we can extract the whole unit, get that brake fluid off. I don't want to damage that paintwork. Yeah, look, you see? I was right. See, that's where the, the stud had broke, and that was drawing the vacuum. Kaput. Right. Let's find the pin, clean all this lot up. And uh, put this back together again. What a mess. Oh, this is quite rusty. I'll take the camera off and I'll show you inside. Perhaps in better light now you can see through here that where the, uh, the bulkhead's rusted all the way along there and all the way along there too. I don't know if you can see that. There's not much strength in it. Look at this here. Hmm. All right, let's get back to putting this cylinder on. Oh. Before you tighten it down, leave all the nuts really slack. Now I've put flat washers, springs and plain nuts on there so it's easy to get on and off. And I've also given it a coat of anti-seize. So if it ever has to come off, then um, we can get it back in. Now I'm going to put the, the clevis back in. I'm going to put it from the other side this time. And this is why I've left this loose though. So you can actually jiggle it around and put this in. And lose it on the floor. Now, how am I going to get the pin in? Don't know. I didn't even see where the damn hole was. No, I filled, it. I filled all the hole up where, where the pin goes through with the uh, anti sleeves. I'm going to just knock this pin out again and turn it so it's horizontal. So, open one leg of the split pin up, that's no problem, you can easily do that. Uh, it is a bit of a fiddle around to get the pin in, so you really need a good pair of uh, needle nose pliers, preferably with an angle like that, then you can get it in. Uh, put the plastic caps back on and then tighten up those 13mm uh, nuts or 8mm, uh, whatever you want to call them. So I've uh, topped up the cylinder with .3 uh, on 200 TDI's .3 and with, you know ones that have got drum brakes on the back's .3 and this dot four for discs, that's because they run a bit hotter. Now, uh, what tips, I've, I've filled up the master cylinder and I've screwed on the pipes, but I haven't tightened them up and I'm just waiting for gravity to do its work and push its way through the cylinder. Uh, I might have to assist it a little bit in a minute. 
The idea is, when you're doing master cylinders, and sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you don't, is that because the pipe's blocked off at the other end, uh, it will hold fluid in that pipe. It wouldn't, shouldn't really need bleeding, but I am going to bleed it once it's in the shop, because it's, it's never been changed, so after we've done this, we can just bleed it all the way through, but I need some brakes to get into my workshop. So uh, I'm just going to sort of little gravity bleed it through, just rough, it'll be a bit bleh, but it'll be okay. Um, one little tip I'll tell you, um, if you're doing these on the left hand drive, if you stood here trying to put the pipes on, it's really difficult. But if you stand at the front and come underneath, it's really, really easy. Well, it's really easy. You can't see what you're doing, but it's not too bad. You can see fluid starting to come out of here. The level's gone down, so it must be going somewhere. I've put the uh, vacuum pipe on already. Now, I'm just whilst I'm on the camera there, I'll bleed and try and push a bit through through the front. I uh, bled the master cylinder through without bleeding all the pipes. I'll do that, that later. But um, I took it for a spin and it goes very, very well indeed. Um, but I thought I'll give you a better closer look up of this bod job that was the master. You can see why I replaced it now. You can see all the paints come off here because it's been leaking. Look at it all. Everywhere. Look, you see there's been a crack or something in here before and they've tried bodging it up with filler or something. And again, this was the... I can't see in this camera there. This was the cause of the leak, the principal cause... It's peeing out now, look at that. This was the cause of the principal leak here. This stud. That's what it should look like. You see, but it looks like that and it was drawing that vacuum through. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's well past its sell-by date, so now to salvage on that thing, scrap. Anyway, let's set the camera up, and I'll put it. I'll go for a drive along the road, and I'll show you what it looks like. The brakes, if I can, if I can get it right. seem to stop all right but I've got to do something with that gear knob it's uh, it's the wrong way around because it's got an LT77 gear knob on an R3, R380 box anyway the brakes now are light as a feather and they're locking up really nice so I'm pleased with that the only thing I've got to do now really is to find an air cleaner that's going to go into that um, that might take a little bit of engineering anyway for now we'll sign this off see you later